Me, male 34, and fiance, female 27. I'm in the process of calling a halt to our wedding as she has asked for an open relationship. All right, folks, where to start? This one is tough to type and the paws are shaking as I'm doing it. As it says in the title, me and my fiance, X, are 34 and 27 respectively, have been together for nearly four years overall and are a year engaged. I'll be totally honest here. Just before we got engaged, she had an emotional affair with a bloke that she worked with. I only found out because one of her friend's best friend contacted me and said that he overheard the friend group discussing it. I confronted her at the time, and after a good bit of arguing and hassle, we came to an agreement to let it go. I'll be totally honest in saying that I'm still slightly in the process of getting over that particular incident, and it discolored my view of her. I manned up, moved on, and proposed, which I had planned on doing anyway. This is just to give an overall context here, and indeed to let it be known that there has been issues in the past. Fast forward to recent time. We are due married in November, traveling abroad for it with family. And back around October, she started acting a bit odd. Distant, not herself, away with the fairies. Even stopped having sex, which was very strange. I put it down to stress around organizing the wedding and the fact that we had moved flats. Forward to Christmas time, and now things are coming to a head. I confronted her straight up, and she said out that she was sorry, has just been stressed. I was very considerate and tried to help her through it. However, it basically continued on ebbing and flowing throughout the next two months, up to yesterday. I arrived in from work last night, and she says that she wants to talk. The vibe was bad, guys, I could tell. We sat down and she said out that she had been reading and that she wasn't having second thoughts about the marriage but the nature of our relationship. At this rate, I was getting a bit agitated and demanded that she come out with the, what the bloody hell she meant. Basically, a few of her friends had back in October, the times matched up, conveyed to her the idea of an open relationship. Basically, they stay with their blokes and have one night stands on nights out if they fancy. I'll be honest, the idea made me ill. I said this to her and she asked to be heard out pulled out some online blog post by a blogger who had a husband and live-in boyfriend. I got halfway through and told her enough of this nonsense. I wouldn't consider myself old-fashioned, but a wife or fiancé bonking other men will never be in fashion. Not in my world, anyway. Well, we got into a fight, and in the end, she was begging me to give it a chance and that nothing is set in stone. I basically said that I needed some headspace and that I'd spend the weekend at my mate's. It was quick after that, and I left without a fuss. I'm typing this on my mate's laptop, and I'm in a bad mental way at the moment. I am seriously considering calling the whole thing off, both relationship and wedding. I suppose if anyone has been in a similar place, I could do with some advice. Ask and you shall receive. Mummy B has a comment before we get to the update. This is a deal breaker. You don't want an open relationship and she does. There is no in-between. Don't marry her. If she wants multiple relationships, she'll seek them extramarital anyway. Don't allow yourself that level of hurt when you can see it coming. All right, update. I spent last night at my mate's, who was absolutely sound about the situation. He basically gave advice that was tantamount to what was given in the comments to call off the relationship. We had a few drinks, a bit of banter, and this morning I went back to the flat and confronted her. She was there, Neither I nor her work on Saturdays, and I set out my stake in as straightforward a manner as I could. Basically, I said that I didn't want to continue with the relationship, and that it's better if we call the whole thing off. The wedding details are merely financial, and not too bad to call back, but at this rate, we couldn't continue to be together as we clearly desired different things. She basically expressed what she felt then, that we still had a chance, that it could work, to give sexual freedom a chance. Look, I'm no crazy prude. But this crap just isn't up my alley at all. I basically said that over the weekend, I'd be over to collect my things. It's a rented flat in town, no big obligation there. And that she can keep the place if she wants. I'll stay with my friend for a while and get myself sorted after. Towards the end, we had a full-blown shouting argument, but I stood my ground and didn't change my course. Not this time, boys and girls. I left, and there is nothing much more to say, really. As I type, me and my mate are having a few cans, and my phone has been exploding since 5 o'clock with her friends, her sister calling me a prick and a sexist for some reason. I'll be grand. Being totally frank, I feel a bit liberated, if that's not too cheesy. The coming days, I'll get everything sorted. The moving and that, but as my father used to say, 
there's always effing worse. A couple of quick comments before we move on to the next story. Lost in Love 678 says, Good for you! For everyone that texts you, I would have a standard ready to paste text that says why in case she somehow tries to make you into the bad guy. It sounds like she is telling everyone some poor me story or some BS. Thank God you didn't marry her and have kids, then have this crap come up 10 years from now. You're so lucky you got out when you did. Abi Zacha closes us out with, That would be a good idea. Just a simple text on social media explaining that they both want different things and that's sad, but it's better to end things and let her be free to follow her wishes because OP is a monogamous person and insists on it knowing both aren't on the same path would be unfair and only make them unhappy. He needs some time to heal and appreciate if people give him a little space to sort things out because he doesn't want to block anybody. The more reasonable and not attacking the ex, the better, because in this way, everybody that still messages with him can be blocked without him looking like the bad guy here. Alright, the first one was fun. Let's see how the second one pans out. I, 32 male, caught my wife, 29 female, cheating. We have been happily married for two years, and were together for five years before that. I found an open chat screen on her computer while cleaning the house that was suspicious, and despite knowing it was wrong, I scrolled up. I found a disturbing conversation with a coworker that included a battle of who loved each other more, longing for cuddles with each other, and talk that was sexual in nature. I confronted her about this, and she admitted to all of it with very little emotion and very calmly. I assume it was on her screen because she was reminiscing, and this happened a long time ago, and the timestamp proved that when she showed me afterwards. She was hanging out with this coworker of hers who she fell for hard. They would make out after going to the bar on Fridays, and they exchanged nudes, but she swears that's as far as it went physically and sexually. The worst part is, is that it happened for over a year, and only stopped because the wife of the other man caught them and gave him an ultimatum. She admitted that if they didn't get caught, they wouldn't have stopped, but she will not get off the fact that she didn't have intercourse as if that's all that mattered. To make it even worse, the time frame puts her doing this to me both before and after our wedding day which means when she stood in front of me and read her vows and said, I do, and everything else, that she was seeing this guy on the side. She said she has done a lot of rebuilding since then and that she has been trying to improve the relationship from her side. We were about to buy a home and everything. She desperately wants to keep this going. She still loves me and she set up counseling, which I agreed to because I signed up for a marriage and I will put in maximum effort to try to keep it together. But alas, I am checked out. The first session is in an hour, and I don't know what to expect. I don't want to continue this, and I have too much empathy to not think of the last seven years of good times, even though many of them are tainted. I am struggling to think of myself and what is best for me. Alright, let's get some comments and then an update. Jill Tro says, You've been married for one year and she only stopped because she got caught. She doesn't even sound remorseful about the pain she caused you and the lies and betrayal. She again sounds sorry she got caught. I hope the therapy session is helpful. I'm afraid I can't think of any helpful advice. Unless she takes responsibility for herself and her actions, there's nothing to stop it happening again. I couldn't deal with that. Hopo Poto says, Seriously, for over a year, during the wedding, she was constantly having an emotional and physical relationship with her coworker. She lied about it every day and has said clearly she'd still be doing it if she wasn't caught by the wife. Now, her only justification is she didn't screw him? There's a very high probability she did, of course, just didn't get caught in that one, so why confess? That's totally ridiculous and in my opinion, unacceptable in many, many ways. Don't buy a house with this woman. At the very least, take time before making any big commitments with her for a long time. Not ready for that, and will only make it harder if you choose to leave. From your story, she ripped your heart out for a year, betrayed your wedding vows, and now is completely ignorant to why that might be devastating for you, regardless of whether she screwed him or not. At the very least, you'll need serious therapy to make this work. In my opinion, coming back from this would be extremely difficult for you guys, even if she was terribly guilty and was willing to do anything in the world to regain your trust. Given that she doesn't seem to have nearly enough contrition, I'd say this is a lost cause. I'm sorry this happened, OP. It will get better if you choose to put your happiness first. There's a quick one month update, then a couple more comments. She wants to reconcile our marriage, but I'm still not sure. Still heavily leaning towards no. 
I told her I would wait for my head to clear. I have had a positive outlook since Wednesday, but I sunk back down a little yesterday. I don't really have a point to make, just needed a vent to folks in similar situations. Alright, more comments. Curious Now 9 starts us off. Do not get back with her. Your whole marriage was a sham. I would just wish her well and move on. Who is to say she wasn't dreaming of the other guy on your wedding night? I listened to a story some time back. A guy went home and told his wife that he failed her. After six years of being married, a woman from his work asked him to go to dinner with her. At the end of the evening, she gave him a kiss. He was destroyed. What he had just done to his wife? He immediately drove home and told her. Offered her everything if she wanted out of the marriage. Seeing him in distress, she then confessed her mistake. The night of their honeymoon, they had a photo shoot. She planned on giving some sexy photos to her husband. While he was busy with friends, she went in the bedroom with the photographer and ended up having sex with the photographer. Sadly, the husband came right in afterwards and never suspected anything. She had sex with her husband right after she did with the photographer. He never knew it. He divorced her a month later. Like him, you're never going to be able to let go of the fact that while your marriage was supposed to be the best part of you both, she was sharing herself and her real love with someone else. Joe McBeerface says, I'm so sorry, man. It sounds like you don't have kids, so that's a silver lining. A month after D-Day, a big part of me still wanted my soon-to-be ex-wife back. Even though when I talked with friends and family, I told them reconciliation was off the table. That was only a couple of weeks ago, and I'm seeing more clearly that even if she fixed the things about her that led to her affairs, I still don't want to be with a person like that. I coped with the things about our marriage that weren't good, but she ran into a string of affairs full speed ahead. So, I guess all I'm saying is that it doesn't matter what your wife does to make amends and improve herself if you don't want her back, you don't have to.